Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explore. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explore, we're going to take a look at NFTs. All right. <laughs> so these are non fungible tokens, and Zim can be used to make NFTs. So we'll go to the Zim site at zimjs.com. You can play around with this NFT right here. Well, it's not the NFT, but it's a <laughs> prototype for it, I guess. Uh, we have made a Zim NFT, and we'll show you that. That is a collectible, and this indeed is what it is. So we go to here. Here's another NFT that we've made called Bloob. Uh, we like making gadgets, so I'm a member of the Gadget Minters. When you mint an NFT, which is uh, art, basically, uh, that can be collected on the blockchain. When you mint, uh, you're called a minter, and so we're gadget minters, and we make interactive NFTs. So here's some information on NFTs. Beeple's sold for 69 million. CryptoPunks, each of these, which could have been made in Zim. They're, they're amazing pixel drawings, no doubt, and they were one of the earliest, if not the earliest for it. That's why they're very expensive, are selling for millions of dollars. So, of course, everybody's jumped on board, and you're now getting art, 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 NFTs, buy, buy, buy. And so we'll see what happens. Uh, Zim can do this, too. Down below, we have uh, an article, Invite for Generative Art Makers and Interactive Artists to Go Beyond Processing. Processing is often used for generative art for NFTs, but we want to show you how you can go beyond that with our components and our controls to make uh, wonderful th interactive NFTs. So this part is on interactive NFTs right here. And here's the steps for making a Zim interactive NFT. And that's what we're doing in this Explore. There's the Zim NFT example with a source, a zip. And there's also uh, the NFT is out on Hicketnunk that you can collect. So this is the Zim NFT right here. Now let's go have a look at it on Hicketnunk. So there it is, and you can pick up these, and there's some information, almost poetry, 6,000 6, characters, I think it is, poetry, that's going across the top there. You can have fun reading that. So this will be the collectible Zim NFT. It represents our Zim library stored in the interplanetary block system, or <laughs> interplanetary <laughs> file system, and um, it's... Uh, ownership is on the blockchain. So that is something that you can collect and then at some point sell as well. Here's the information for that. We've not quite put it up for sale yet because we're about about to launch it. Uh, but it will be for sale in a sense for, for free for just a token amount <laughs> of, of Tezos. As a matter of fact, to set up a wallet, we can show you how to do that as well. Let's pop on back here. Um, there's getting a wallet and Tezos, probably the easiest way you can do that is for you to get a wallet, which is free and just takes two minutes to do, and then ask us and we'll give you a few Tezos. Like, well, it, 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 the, or not a few Tezos, that's a Tezos about $2 or something like that, but we'll just give you enough Tezos that you can get the NFT, which will be <laughs> pennies, like not very much at all. Okay, but you've got to have some of those to be able to collect. And if you want your own, for instance, get $100 to start collecting, then you can go through uh, this set of steps here. But you have to kind of open up a few places and uh, deal with financial institutions, which require confirmation, etc. But just to get the wallet uh, and for us as Zim to give you just a little bit so they can <laughs> get the collectible, that shouldn't be too hard. And maybe we'll go over that in a, in a different video. Right now, what I want to do is show you how to mint an NFT, such as this one right here. And the NFT that we're going to do is this right here. So we're going to make turn this into an NFT in this Explore. That is the goal. This is up on CodePen. I suppose we can give you the link to that in, in the YouTube video messages. It's got a way to change the curvature. There we go and to adjust the speed and go forward and backwards on speed even. And then also a delay is uh, how warbly it looks, I suppose. So here it is. And uh, then the controls collapse. This is the code over here on the right-hand side. 
and indeed we're going to need to take that and put it into uh, some local files and then we upload a zip. Basically it's your normal zim stuff all in one folder, all local. So you have to bring in local files. We're going to show you how to do that as we proceed here. You take uh, that one folder, zip it up, and submit it to Hicket Nunk, uh, which is a, a fairly easy process to do. But before you can do that, you've got to get a wallet to be able to do that. All, all those transactions are put onto the blockchain. And that means um, you need a wallet for, for you to be able to do that. To mint just costs maybe 30 cents or something like that. You may have heard of gas prices, they're called, for minting with Ethereum, for instance, another uh, crypto coin. That, uh, that's starting to get expensive, maybe even up, upwards towards $50. And uh, so this is not the case here. It, it only costs maybe 20 cents, 30 cents uh, American to, to mint something. Okay, so let's do it then. Uh, why don't we take a look at what's in the zip file? So if you were on this page here and grab making an interactive NFT, there's a local version of the NFT. Here is uh, the zip file. And we're gonna pop on out now to Adam where we've got the what's in the zip file here. So it'll be called Zim like that. It has an assets folder. In the assets folder is an animated GIF of the uh, of the feature of the app. So maybe we'll show you if we have time. We'll show you how to make an animated GIF as well, uh, and the software that I use for that. And then here's a scripts folder, and in the scripts folder is CreateJS, a Zim Min, and this thing called Zim Crystal, which you may not have seen yet. Zim Crystal is a small file here that calls both the CreateJS and the Zim min. In the past, that's just been, the, the minified file of Zim has just been called ZimJS, but now we've gone to a crystal form. And what that allows us to do is have Zim and CreateJS called, or CreateJS and Zim called, with just this one script here. So that's the new template in Zim NFT. All this is Zim NFT, which is just in the middle of launching, but maybe by the time you've seen this video, it will be uh, there and established. So there's the one call, but note that it's local rather than out to the CDN, uh, simjs.org. It's not out in the org site in the CDN. Uh, we had to bring those files local. If you grab the zip file, then you'll have them uh, local or you can go grab them local from the CDN, just download them locally. Okay, so uh, this is the index, and as you can see down in the index, all of it's still the same. You can either use fit or full or uh, fill. Any of those would work. Full will open up, basically, Hicketnunk shows it in a big, uh, starts it off showing it in a box, uh, a square. Then if you go full screen, it opens up full screen monitor. So uh, fit will work fine. Uh, we did we did bo uh, bloob. <laughs> we did bloob uh, in the fit mode, and we did the Zim NFT in the full mode, uh, which is this one right here. So if you're in the full mode, you would do some stuff, and then you would at the bottom probably have a frame resize, which positions to various places. Okay, so this is what went into the Zim NFT. There were making some rectangles. That was the set of making a rectangle. Uh, there was animating the letters and making sure that we can get them back to the beginning. Anyway, we don't need to really go through this. There was uh, dragging and animating back and then making those letters press to, to reveal the patterns. And that's fairly heavily commented. And there's our icon, which animates down to the bottom corner. So once again, this looks like this. Boom, there goes the icon animating. Here are the, uh, the boxes, and there's the effect that we have when we toggle it like that. So that's all what was in there. <clears throat> okay, so let's grab this code right here, copy. This is from CodePen, and CodePen has under its settings, under its JavaScript settings, the various things that we had here. So this was using uh, Zim 
Cat 2. I don't think we're going to have a problem, though, in bringing it into NFT. Should should all still work, so let's hope it does. But anyway, this code right here is is only the, the Zim code, the frame code. So it starts with the frame, basically, right there, rather than the Zim files. So just to note that. Now we're going to pop into here. We'll make a folder for it, so a new folder. And I'm going to call this one, uh, I've taken that animation or the, you know, the, the visual there, and I made a video for the Pagoda Scope. That's in, in VR, virtual reality, in alt space. Uh, that's a, a place that's like dancing in a kaleidoscope, and we have video walls all around the outside, and or around the inside of it, I guess. Uh, and I did Craftworks. Let's see, which one was it? Autobahn. So Autobahn, I'm going to call this one Autobahn, if I can spell Autobahn. Let's, uh, do we have to have a look? <laughs> I can't remember how to spell it. Uh, Autobahn, okay, B-A-H-N. So where were we here? B-A-H-N. Uh, I guess I'll just call it Autobahn, although I'm going to call it Autobahn Whisper. In the song Autobahn, it goes, Autobahn, <laughs> like that. And it's kind of like this strange computer whisper. So uh, I think I'll call the piece Autobahn Whisper. That's a little bit long for a folder name. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have some other Autobahn, so I'll just call it Autobahn as the folder name. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, in the end. So there it is. I have Autobahn. In there, I'll make an index file. So the, the, the main page needs to be an index file. So new file, index.html. That's quite common when you're making mobile apps too. It's like that as well. And then in here, well, I've got an awkward paste here and I'll, I'll paste it. This is, this is the Zim stuff, but I, I need the script. So I may as well go back to our template right here and grab the index, may as well copy all of this. It's basically the Zim template, except this meta tag has been added. This is a meta tag that points to where the um, thumbnail or whatever you want to call it, the, there's an image that represents it. Okay, but otherwise it will be the normal Zim template. So I'm going to grab that and paste it back into our page here, our index. So that's what I mean by the awkward paste. There it goes. And then we'll get rid of all of the stuff that we had in the template, or most of it anyway. Here's some information about the NFT. I want to keep some of that in there. Well, you probably won't. There's the frame call right there. Frame, Zim fits. Yeah, okay, we'll just get rid of all that. That's be fine. Zim NFT, the official. No, it's not that. Okay, so, and that one as well. So basically, we've gone in here. This would be considered, I suppose, the template uh, stuff where uh, we're going to call this not the Zim interactive NFT, but uh, Zim auto on whisper. I'm not even sure if anybody sees that title, but uh, there it is. And then underneath here we have all of the code that came from CodePen, and we'll pop that into the script call. Okay, so hopefully that's working already. If I right click and oh wait, uh, where's my call to the scripts? Oh yeah, here it is. So that's a call to the scripts. Do we have the scripts in there? No, we don't. Okay, so we've got the Autobahn folder, but we didn't copy the scripts or the assets. May as well copy both those, copy, and paste them into Autobahn, paste. So now we've got the wrong NFT animated GIF. I'm not sure what an animated GIF shows up. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we can't even see it here in, uh, in Adam. But that's, um, we'll have to work on that after. But now we've got the scripts in here, so that should be good. Okay, let's try it out. Right click and open and well, try it open in Browser Plus. That doesn't look too good. It's a bunch of index HTML. What happened? I don't know. It's like we're missing the HTML stuff. 
HTML script. Oh, did we save it? No, we didn't save it. Save, open a browser, plus. There we go. Okay, so, uh, and yeah, that seems to be working still. Okay, or you could have opened that up in a browser. I just have, have browser plus in the, in Adam working here. Okay, slow down so we can think. Autobahn's whisper, Autobahn, well, it's a little bit slow. Autobahn, with a little bit of delay, it makes it look like a Autobahn. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> it's very effective, <laughs> especially when this is life size and you're you're dancing in it. Uh, great. So there's Autobahn's whisper going. We might want to say some information about it uh, using frame animation and frame for interface. So animation does not have to update interface. Oh, we had two different frames in this one. But right here at the beginning of the, uh, the script, we would say uh, people can possibly see this code. Um, it's, it's a bit difficult. Hicket nunt make it, makes it quite difficult to find it. But in the console, there's um, uh, an announcement from Zim, for instance, in the console. We can turn that off if we wanted to. And that announcement from Zim points to a link to Zim, and it will be this Zim right here, the Zim min, and that helps them find the scripts folder, and then from the scripts folder, they can work backwards to the index page itself. It's all on the interplanetary file system, you know, with long, strange URLs to get there with no big, long numbers in them. But uh, people can find their way to the code if they so desired, so I like to keep the comments in there, and um, Therefore, I'm going to announce this is an NFT. How about the second NFT? Uh, it's kind of nice to provide. Uh, I have a friend who's in this in this space, the NFT space, and he says that what will sell is story. There's just so much art there that people aren't necessarily buying the art for the art's sake. They're buying it for who made the art and what's the story behind it. So. It helps to it helps to have a bit of a, a following to start. I, I as Dan Zen had a following at one point, <laughs> fifty thousand people following, uh, but that was back in the nineties, two thousands, and uh, then I've changed. Um, I'm also now Doctor Abstract. I'm known as Doctor Abstract for most people, and creating a following from that. Uh, will happen, hopefully. I mean, that's the point. Zim's, uh, we're creating a following with Zim. So there's a story here. There's no doubt about it. And we don't want to just present the art. We actually want to sell the story. So if you take a look at our NFTs, there's a story in them as well. And I would recommend that you consider that. What's your story? If you want, you can come along and join our story and be some of the first people that are minting interactive works with Zim and, and be part of that story. If we become big, then you'll be, become big. You'll become an artist, much like artists uh, in the Impressionist times or the Surrealists. Uh, they, they had a group that helped them. So please consider that if you're doing art and are enjoying this interactive art. Okay, onward we go. So this is the second NFT from, uh, by, I guess, by Dr. Abstract of the Gadget Minters, okay? And let's put a date on it, 2021. Oops, <laughs> very much in the future. And let's see, probably what would be good would be just to take a little bit of that. Sorry that I'm taking this time to do this, but I'm, we're going to mint this and that means it's there. Uh, so we have to take a little bit of care doing this. I'm going to go back to the, the other one here and just see if there's anything that we can snip in. So the official NFT, there's some Zim information. The NFT starts, this is a description of the NFT. We don't need to do that. And by the way, it just came from, actually that's an interesting point. We have to create a description for this. I wonder if I can actually do all this live because the description takes a little bit of thinking. 
and why not then use the description that was was done in Hicketnunk? Why don't I show you where that is? So we'll just back out a little bit. We'll go to Hicketnunk and we'll start in on the creating of the description there. Although Hicketnunk is a little, uh, it's a little hickety. <laughs> Hicketnunk means here and now. We'll, we'll, we'll go and check it out and I'll, I'll tell you what I mean. Uh, so Hicketnunk right here. And here we're going to see also art that is being collected, I think, if, if it shows up. Here's art that's being, uh, or not collected, but uh, being posted that has been minted. And there's all sorts of art. And you can see that, hey, maybe you couldn't do that art. But it doesn't matter. There's just so much of this really cool looking art that uh, as a matter of fact, you can usually buy it too. So if we go in here, this is for Tez. For, that's, uh, that's like $8, $10, so a little bit expensive. But if they've got a story, do they have a story? I don't know who this is. So their story might be on social media. Perhaps they're telling the story through Twitter, and, and that's where people know them. But here, this doesn't mean anything to me. I'm not going to collect this for that much. I will collect... Oh, one part of the story is... Uh, sorry, I missed that. Is... Um, are there uh, are there other people collecting it? You know, so other people collecting it is also part of the story. I tend to look for interactive works on here, either interactive works or at least generative artworks. Mm, that's you know kind of fun. One Tez, that's like two bucks, so I I might go and collect that. I just hit that collect button, and right here is the stuff that I've collected so far. So here's the two that have minted. There's Bloob, the first of the gadget minters. Here's the Zim NFT one. And then under collections are some of the ones I've collected. This is Dave Yang's work. Um, Carlson's work is somewhere in here. Is that it? I think so. Oh, this is Frederick Van Hoots. And he does have a story. This, to me, it's worth it. I've seen his art, and it's not actually listed here as story. <laughs> But um, like I said, for me, it's worth it. And then these can be sellable at, at some other point as well. So what was the point of getting here? Okay, point of getting here is not for how to set up it. Now, it's pretty easy to do, and there's instructions on the NFT, and that will be maybe a video for later. But how to how to mint one. So you go, it's called an object, or OBJKT, and you go to mint it. And here's what you type in. So it will have a title. We were going to call it. Mm, uh, auto bon whisper and then a description <laughs> this is where you sort of need to get poetic and I don't think you can edit the description after so you can burn the NFT that means um, delete it as long as none of as long as they haven't been swapped as long as other people don't own it uh, but as soon as other people own it, it's it's locked in. And you're you're stuck with it. So uh, the other thing is, as you as so, I'm going to type in here. Uh, just put test for now. I'll put test here. Uh, addition. So how many additions do you want to do? I'm going to do ten royalties every time you sell one. Well, the first time you sell it, you get all the money. But if somebody else then sells it, you get a royalty. And this all goes back to you automatically. It's quite wonderful. So if we ask for 10%, then that's it. And then here's where you upload the OBJKT, the object. And that's the zip file that we've got. Darn, I can't preview yet. What I was going to tell you is if you preview it, after you do the uploading here, if you preview it, there's a little backlink. If you use the back button up here, it completely wipes out all your information. So I put in a help thing, and they're, they're going to look at maybe putting in a, you know, autom automatically save it so you don't lose it. In other words, the first time I did it, I spent all this time typing stuff in here. Uh, it went well. I was previewing it a bunch of different times. I was checking the spelling on something. I used the back button, and I lost everything that I had done. <laughs> Luckily, I had edited so much that I actually remembered most of it. <laughs> but still, just a little bit of a warning there. Um, so... I was going to say that it might not be the best place here to write that anyway. It probably would be better to write it in your in your text file so that you, you've got it there and you don't lose it. So why don't we leave this one as it is, and we'll go back and we'll write that up together. 
we'll work on a little bit of story. So this is a Zim Explorer that we're doing. We do have time um, to do this type of stuff. I'm uh, sorry, this might it's not exactly coding that we're looking at now, but I think this is almost as important to just share a little bit about this. Okay, so let's have some thought. And also it's necessary. I can't actually mint it until I put the story. I don't have the story yet. So let's uh, let's do that together. I'm coming back here. And this is the, the Zim index. So we want to go back to the Autobahn, the second NFT by Dr. Abstract of the Gadget Minters. That could be... A uh, way to start. Um, how about more like? Did I use a fascinating the last time? <laughs> we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what I used for bloob. Here's bloob. Did I write down in the index of bloob? That's just the first one. Inventor Dana. Is, okay, that's a little bit more. bloob. It is an excellent. No, so this is not the same marketing words as I used in. Um, bloob. But let's just have a quick look at bloob out here to give you the idea. Uh, that's Hicket Nunk, and we'll go to another Hicket Nunk. Hicket Nunk means here and now, and you'll note that the Hicket Nunk has changed. I think, if you recall, that one wasn't there. I think these ones were just maybe loading in or something like that. I don't think this one maybe hasn't loaded yet. There's some, some time. There's a lot of stuff going on at Hicket Nunk. It doesn't always happen instantly. <laughs> Uh, so under manage assets, here's my assets, here's Bloob. And there's Bloob working in a square. Remember, you can have a square. So Bloob is the fit mode, and here it is full screen. So yeah, that's, that's fine. And you can control. So it's something similar where you're controlling that. It's just a slightly different look. And I don't know if it's a, the best idea to actually do two in a row that are so similar, but whatever. That's the one I've decided on. And if we come on down here, a fascinating, I <laughs> did use a fascinating gadget by Dr. Abstract that lets you scrub through colorful noise. Hmm. That's actually what we're doing in the other one. The left dial changes the speed, including reverse. The right dial changes the curvature from smooth. And a little bit of information about what we're doing. We're zooming in on the noise equation to bumpy, zoomed out on the noise equation. Pressing the pattern changes the color. Bloob is the first Inter uh, first NFT to be minted that uses the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework. So there's the story. The first of anything is usually worth more. Inventor Dr. Abstract, the founder of Zim, or Zim founder, is a Canadian New Media Award winner and has been making digital gadgets since the 90s at danzen.com and will continue to do so until he's in the 90s. <laughs> so expect a long line of collectibles from the inaugural member, inaugural, that's what I was looking up, <laughs> the spelling of inaugural member of the Gadget Minters. So seriously, if you are interested, if you do the same type of things as we do, or it doesn't have to be the same type, but if you're making what you might consider gadgets, like interactive works that are a bit quirky, or something. Like I've got dozens and dozens on on that that I can bring in right away, and that's the plan. Um, then come join us. Uh, let me know in Slack or on um, on Discord. Uh, be part of it. Yeah, you know. That, hopefully that'll that'll help us all. And then here are the various keywords. So we can use a fair bit of this. As a matter of fact, why don't we just grab this? If we can seem to select those keywords. So I'm going to copy that and bring it in. And maybe we can just use the last half of it. So that was Bloob. This is Autobahn here. And paste in here. Darn. OK. Uh, comment these. And we'll put on the wrap. View, find, selection, view, toggle software. So this is what we wrote about the first one. Bloob is the second. Why don't we go in and say Autobahn Whisper is the second <laughs> there. Second NFT to be minted that uses a Zim JavaScript. Ah, Doctor, right, right. Okay, I think we can keep that uh, just as it is and adjust this fascinating here and tell the story. What's the story? The story is this is being used in virtual reality uh, for the Kraftwerk Autobahn song. 
in the pagoda scope um and that way hey you know it's like well neat so how do we tell that story um imagine <laughs> imagine you are in the pagoda scope by dr abstract see what i mean bit of a story. And all these will eventually add up and will be something that will be magical to collect. That's the theory. Uh, of course, anybody can write a story. I don't think many people do. Um, it just it just needs to catch on. And then all of a sudden it works, you know, and, uh, and you know, I've been at it for, for, for 20 years, maybe longer. <laughs> One day it'll catch on. They'll look back and it'll be potentially anyway, not not that I have <laughs> have an extra large ego or anything but the works i've done in interactive media are just you know so far far reaching and and varied and exciting and uh, you know one day somebody's gonna look back on it and go oh yeah there we go Alrighty, so imagine you're in the pagoda scope by dr abstract um this nft don't spend too long with this like we can weave it back in but we got to bring them back to the present this NFT, comma, uh, what's it called? Uh, Auto Bon Whisper was used for a craft work video. Auto Bon. Uh, and I have to be a little bit careful here because it wasn't, it, it's not an official craft work video. <laughs> uh, they won't even be able to find it on, on YouTube. Although I, maybe you should post these as well. It, it's sometimes tricky with copyright. Um, so anyway, we just have to watch it a little bit. A craft work video, a custom made for the uh, VR alt space. Well, actually, Altspace is Altspace VR officially, so I may as well use that. Altspace VR. Hopefully, people recognize that as virtual reality. But we could say that in virtual reality. So the Autobahn Whisper was used for a craft work video on a custom made for the Altspace VR um, world. And I have to say what it is, but we've already said the Pagoda Scope. So, uh, all space mm, world where people party in a virtual, that'll do, virtual reality uh, kaleidoscope. Collide, oh crap, how do you spell kaleidoscope? Kaleidoscope. Kaleidos kaleidoscope, I think I call these ah, German words. What do you know? Uh, uh, come on out here. And kaleidoscope, did I spell it right? Well, the School of Art did it. It looks like I did. Okay, so we've got a School of Art confirming it. Um, where people party in a virtual reality kaleidoscope. Okay, so is that enough? Oh, I should describe the art piece again. Uh, you can set the dials, so you can set the curvature, the curvature, the speed, including reverse. <laughs> and, uh, well, I don't usually do that Oxford comma there. And what was the last one? Um, oh, the what do we call that thing the delay the delay and the delay set the to give the nested noise like that that's called alliteration the nested noise um the nested noise generative art generative art Um, the feeling, the effect, the effect of speaking to you. 
All right, so you can set the curvature, the speed, the delay, and the delay to give the nested noise generative art the effect of whispering. Of whispering. That's a bit more dramatic, maybe. The effect of whispering. Okay, is that enough? Where we are, um, you know, I'm cognizant a bit of the time here. I, I want to get to the rest of this. I think that seems okay. Did we forget anything? And then we go Autobahn Whisper is the second. Yeah, that's probably enough. Okay, so we can leave this in here as a description, but in here, okay, so we'll grab this. I don't need the second NFT, do I? Because I say it down here. So probably second NFT uses this. Didn't mention the gadget minters, but there's the gadget minters down here, isn't there? Making digital gadgets. Oh no. Oh, inaugural men the gadget minters. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. Need any of that. So I'll grab this and put it into the boxes. Not for boob. Bloob, sorry, beep. Uh, Autobahn whisper test, so there that goes. Imagine, all right, that looks nice and we don't need the comment here. Okay, so all that's good and ready to go. The reason why I put that in there now is because back in here, you don't want big long text that wraps because people might not see it. So you, you break it up into single lines and we'll comment those individually after. So this Autobahn, uh, this NFT Autobahn Whisper Craft Room, custom made for the alt space VR world. Mm, custom, having to worry about the length of it here. Uh, probably a break is good there where people party in a virtual, uh, how about custom made for the VR world. This might be a better break. You can set the curvature, speed, and delay to give the nest. Okay, good enough. All right, and then all this can be commented like so and fits nicely in there in the comment. Audubon Whisper is the second NFT framework uh, that uses hmm, the gem framework at whatever. It's uh, too long. That did. Uh, Inventor Dan Zen is founder of Canadian Media Awards winner and has been making games and will continue to do so until the 90s. Until the 90s. So expect a long line of collectibles from. Okay, good. All right. And then we go into. So that's in there if they see it. Also, remember that people are buying this as a collectible. Spend a little bit of time making it complete and. And interesting. It does. It did. That only took me a minute to get this information right in the collectible, rather than on the website. Where I, I don't know if that is always going to be visible on the website. If that's the only place this collectible will ever be seen, I suppose it probably is. So that means it's it is connected. But uh, you got it here right in the code. Okay. So spend a bit of time doing that. And then what have we got? Uh, then its information. So I might have, if I had a bit more time, I might have described an overview here of how we made these rings and what we were doing. But as you can see, it's fairly well commented in here. There's one bit of information. This uses the generator. And if it turns out that people uh, are using processing, they might not know quite what's going on with Zim. And if we tell them that the generator works just like processing, that would be handy. And I think we did that over probably in blue, I think. So let's have a look here. The Zim generator works somewhat like processing. Okay. So we may have done that. I didn't do it up top there. It's right down where we're making the generator. That's probably right down where we're making the generator in here as well. The Zim generator. Yeah, there it is. But that's a little lower down. We might have wanted a, a word up here right in the intro before we before, before we go into something like uh, the app. Yeah. 
if we just told them, what do we got? Zim generator or something like that. Uh, how about something like this feature uses the Zim generator, which operates very much like processing slash p5.js. There we go. Okay. And, and that's good. And then we start in on the app because if they start seeing all this frame stuff first, they don't know what that is necessarily and uh, it might upset them a touch. Whereas if we tell them that the generator, all this stuff right in here where you've got noise, you've got push and translate and stuff, all that stuff is like, like processing. Um, but where we differ is we're able to make custom components. Okay, uh, so we save that, or not custom components, Zim components. We've got like Zim components, which allow you to make components and, and change them to look how you want easily. Whereas in processing, you'd have to make those from scratch. And we know that uh, Zim's half filled with components, that making components from scratch is not necessarily an easy thing or a time efficient thing. So there we go. I think this is all ready now. We've got a title. We've got the wrong image. So why don't we take a look at how we would make a, an image then? And that for that, I'm going to use a program called um, Screen to GIF. And I'll post the link to that. Screen to GIF. I've, I've looked at a bunch of uh, these animated GIF makers. As a matter of fact, I changed computer drives and lost this uh, and couldn't remember what it's called. And I went hunting again and spent, especially on Windows and the Windows Store, spent like, I don't know, an hour and could not find a proper uh, animated GIF thing that did what I wanted that, that worked as well as this one that I had before. Eventually, I had to go find my old drive Oh, start it up again and find out what the heck it was called and I managed to grab it and it's called screen to gif so here it is it's got a recorder which is uh, like a, a, an adjustable window and you just hit record so I'm going to put this out of the way for a second while we go find what we're going to record I think that was out on here one of these there it is okay and maybe pick up the speed a little bit on that it looks about the nice blobby that I like, and then pull this on over. Perhaps F of, uh, it doesn't have to be too big. It, it kind of goes on their actual size. So what we can do is sometimes this blue goes underneath. We want, probably want to get that centered on there. We'll col I think we'll collapse it. Maybe is the best. Like that. How does that look? Seems okay. And I hit record. We get a couple blobs and then I stop it like that. And up comes what was recorded. Bloopity, bloopity, bloopity. And one of the things that happens with this type of recording is that you'd see the loop. So if we just play this and make it loop, uh, here's the playback, play it and make it loop, it's going to have a problem at the end. So here it is almost getting to the end. And you see that jump that's in there? It's not the end of the world, but one option would be to make it smaller or like shorter and uh, rewind it. So this one has a rewind and sometimes that can be handy. Uh, I would imagine if we took this and rewound it, we'd end up with about a megabyte of preview, which isn't the end of the world. It's not the best, but it's okay. Uh, I think that's what what the NFT one was about in a megabyte. All right, so let's uh, have a look at how we can do some editing here. Under edit, so now I'm in the edit mode, we can scrub the timeline. There it is starting. It goes up and it goes down and it bloops probably by about in here somewhere. I, I don't think we're gonna notice. So if I rewind it from here, so I'm gonna delete the rest of these. So right here it says, Delete all previous or delete all next? We delete all next, yes. And that leaves us with just this batch and we're gonna end up doing a rewind that's kind of like that. And then uh, I think this is what we do, yo-yo, reverse. What's 
yo-yo versus reverse. Reverse, I think, just changes them all back, but yo-yo is what we want. So there it is. It ended up making more things at the bottom. So this will end up yo-yoing back to where we are. Let's do a play on that and see how it looks. There's the, there's the yo-yo just happened and it hit reverse and pretty soon we're gonna go back to the beginning and there's the yo-yo going forward. So yeah, that looks good. And then we go to file and hit save as. It, it takes a little bit of time to get used to what you're doing here, but as you can see, I've gotten used to it. And then you save as, and it's not all that bad, is it? And then we're gonna put a name down in here. We'll save it on the desktop. It will be called Autobahn. By soon, I'm gonna know how to spell Autobahn. Isn't that amazing? And then we save. There are some options there as to um, how, how big you want this to be and different different options there, but generally I just leave it at the default. Seems fine. And here it is processing the animated GIF. So this is called screen to GIF. I don't even know where I found it. Found it at some point. I believe it's free as far as I know. I may have given some money to it. Uh oh, 2.5 megabytes. So that's a little bit big. Um, let's have a look at it and see how long it runs for it. Maybe that we could cut it in half, for instance, and still um, have a l have it work fine. So I go find it on the desktop, desktop reveal. Here it is, autobahn.gif. And I think I open those up automatically in, oh, it opens up in any browser. So I'll open it up in Chrome. So here's Chrome, drop the autobahn. Yeah, definitely there's enough time there. You can see the quality is pretty nice, huh? There's a little bit of purple thing going on in there, but it's not the end of the world. And it it could be cut in half. Okay, so we go back to here. Oh, it's cut in half, but it already did its loop thing. So where did it do its bounce? Can you tell? somewhere in about here, but we're cutting. So I'll just delete the, the end on there. So hitting the edit, delete all the next, yes. And then I'll cut this in half again. So I'm using the scrub scroll bar to about halfway there and saying delete all next. And there it goes, hopefully we're good. And that leaves a smaller amount there that uh, hopefully won't look too bad when it reverses. And we go the yo-yo yo-yo uh, effect applied. Let's do a little test on it. Playback. Mm. There it goes forward, kind of goes up and then back. Mm, yeah, yes, it's, uh, you get the idea. And we save. So this will be what is shown on the front of Hicket Nunk as people scroll by. So there you go. One of the things possibly that we would w have wanted to do is show the controls to show that it's interactive and you can control it. Thing is though, really, you're not gonna get many sales from the Hicket Nunk site itself. You have to do it yourself. You've gotta go out and market and tell people on Twitter or Instagram or somewhere else, your friends, your family, or some, somewhere to get you started. Uh, don't rely on Hicket Nunk. Hicket Nunk just goes like, you, I mean, you'll get maybe a collector or two if, if it's cheap enough. But uh, you, you want to establish your audience probably somewhere else other than Hickenbuck. Okay, so we go to file, we hit save as, and we can um, auto bonds there. It already exists, save, I can't remember what it does. File name's already in use, pick another one. That's why you may have seen two a couple times, save. You can always adjust it later. Here it goes, and hopefully we're sitting in the megabyte area. One point five. Well, okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's have. A, oh, the other option would be to make it smaller. That's perhaps that's bigger. Let's just see. My apologies. Let's see if that's easy to do in the save as. Let's have a look. A 
there is something to do with dimensions to gif qual quality there is quality I don't see a size thing there but under edit maybe there's a size move do reduce frame count override uh, increase or decrease over what is that increase or decrease scale scale delay statistics changes an image crop resize so there's the current properties dpi times per inch width keep aspect ratio yeah okay what if we said 500 i think that's probably okay and then apply And let's do our test. Now that I can see the whole thing again, I'm, I'm concerned that it's up a bit too high. Playback. No, because there it went down. All right, okay. Let's try that then. And then it was under File, Save. Uh, file, Save As. Well, this will be three. Did, did we do it too? Can't remember if we did. Oh yeah, we did. And it was one fifth, one point five megabytes. So here goes another one. Seven oh seven. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at it then. And it was Autobahn three. Yeah, there we go. That's fine. Now that uh, we've made it smaller, we could have maybe made it longer. <laughs> You know what I mean? We we had an extra bit of extra bit of file size there to probably make that a touch longer, but I think that gets the, the general idea. And that's called Autobahn three. We'll now bring that into our folder here. Autobahn three goes into assets of Autobahn, and we'll rename it here. Rename. To just autobahn.gif, where it will be here. Autobahn.gif. Okay. Uh, we won't see it as we test here, but let's do another test in a browser. Open up in browser. Just make sure this looks okay. Looks all right to me. All right. We're good. And close that and open up the Hicket Nunk. This is the version of it on Hicket Nunk. Here it is. Autobahn Whisper. We're nearly there, folks. Thanks for sticking with us. Hopefully it wasn't too torturous. Oh, our tags. Okay, so the tag should be somewhat similar to the ones that we had uh, before. So that's these ones. I think I tried copying these and they didn't copy well. No, so we'll just have to drop it over here and have a look at it as we go. So, oh, I don't want to upload that yet. I'm still working on tags. Okay, so tags. They are uh, noise, comma, interactive, comma, interactive media. They, they just join them together. So there's no point in putting spaces in behind. I'll join them. And I found, actually, they accidentally joined one in the wrong way. I am Dan Zen. I am also, uh, well, I'm not Zim, but ZimJS, those ones. So please tag them like that so that we can, uh, you know, find, find other people's. Uh, it's the canvas. It's a JavaScript. It's JavaScript. Java, JavaScript canvas framework. You don't have to do these, but I like to. It's a JavaScript framework as well. Um, I'm Dr. Abstract. Dr. Abstract. It's generative art. Generative art. It's a gadget. I like this term gadget, and I am a member of the Gadget Minters. Um, and the title. Uh, what was it again? Autobahn. 
Nobody's going to find Autobahn Whisper exactly, but they might find Autobahn. Uh, but uh, just in case they do from the title Auto, doesn't hurt to put it in there. Whisper. It might even not hurt to put in Whisper. They might remember, oh, it had something to do with Whisper. So there we are. Those are the keywords. Did we miss anything? I don't think so. Okay. Blue, I'm just looking at the other one there. Seems seems pretty good. 10 editions. How many editions did we make here? We made 10 editions. What was our royalties? I think our royalties was 10%. Uh, I set the royalties for the Zim NFT to 12 because we were on version 12. I can just see, can you imagine like uh, eventually making millions at this? And if we had set the royalties at 15%, we'd be like <laughs> a third richer than we would have been. <laughs> We set it at 10%. It's just like, ah. So you never know. I don't think uh, I don't think putting 15% here would stop anybody from trading it, and I would just get 15%. But um, that's that's up to you. I'm not really terribly interested in money, uh, and so 10% is fine. That's the minimum. Uh, it goes from, I think, 10 to 25%. Here's the upload OBJKT. So we haven't quite done uh, finished that yet, but let's we're, we're nearly there. We're good with Autobahn, or the Autobahn Whisper. Uh, we don't need the NFT in there anymore, so we'll delete that. We've got our assets. We've got CreateJS, Zimmin, all that stuff seems to be working. We have, where'd this one come from? This NFT.gif. Is that in this folder? It is. <laughs> Delete that. I don't even know how it got there. Did okay. The original Zim one didn't have boot to trash. All right. So uh, assets good. Scripts good. And there's the index is good. There's the autobahn folder. I can't zip the. Uh, I did make an Atom plugin that does uh, zip files, but it didn't end up working all that well. So I usually go back out to here and we'll pop into, this is, this is my file system, NFT. So here's the NFT folder at the moment. There's Autobahn and send to compressed folder. So right from the Windows operating system, there's the Autobahn.zip, there's the Zim zip, there's the Bloob zip, there's the Autobahn zip. And that's what we're going to be uploading here. Mm, not there. <laughs> one in one of these hickadunks uh, here. Yep. Upload OBJKT. So we go like this, and it's looking for uh, in Zim NFT. There's Zim Autobahn NFT. So we've selected the Autobahn NFT. As soon as it knows that, it's asked for a cover image. So we go into the Autobahn, into Assets, and there's the animated GIF, which we've selected, and we preview it. Preview. So this is, this is it. There it is previewed. Cool. I think the Preview Max does that for some reason. I don't, I don't know why, but you don't need to worry about it. Uh, oh, that's something to worry about, though. And I think we've just made it. Looks OK. This little. Uh, make it bigger is is right where sometimes we put the Zim logo down there. So we we had minted uh, the NF Zim NFT one, and then we realized, oh man, <laughs> the Zim icon animated right down, and it got cut off by that. So we had to move it up. We had to burn the old one and then mint a new one uh, because of that. But that looks like it's good enough. It's not totally getting away. And the other thing is when it's maximized it tends to stay there when because you're you're almost always cursor over it but when it's minimized it doesn't always stay there it only stays over on the rollover but when it's maximized it stays there and then it would stay right on okay so autobahn whisper imagine you're in the pagoda scope by dr abstract this nft autobahn whisper was used for a craftwork video autobahn uh, custom made for the alt space VR world where people party in a virtual reality kaleidoscope. Do I need capital letters for virtual reality kaleidoscope? Maybe not. Okay, so let's bring those down. Uh, you can set the curvature, speed, and delay. Okay, curve it. Oh, curve. Hmm. 
So I said curvature, maybe I should just say curve, that would be fine. Delay to give the nested noise generative art the effect of whispering. Does it have a whisper? I guess so. <laughs> Autobahn Whisper is the second NFT to be minted that uses, oh darn, it's actually the third NFT because Zim NFT was, so it's a third NFT. Uh, so maybe I should adjust that. Yes. Oh darn, it's in the NFT itself. How can we do that? Uh, it's a second NFT that isn't Zim itself. <laughs> I don't know. Will people care? Um, we've written NFT in the zip file. So if we change it here, we might have to change it in the zip file. Uh, I think that the other stuff we don't need to change in the zip file so far. All right. So here we go to edit it. The operation is going to cost that much and royalties are set at 10. Okay, so minting would do it. And then there's the back and here is not the back to use. <laughs> Don't use that back. Use this back because it's all the same page really and they're using React or something to build this. All right, so a little bit of an adjust here. Imagine, do I need a dot, dot, dot? Imagine, comma. Let's... Just stick with the comma. You're in the Pagoda Scope by Dr. Abstract. This NFT, kind of Audubon Whisper, comma, was used for a craftwork video, Audubon. I think I need a comma there. Custom made for the Altspace VR world, comma. <laughs> Or people party, or people is people party, both P's, that's nice. Or people party in a virtual reality kaleidoscope. Um, I do have an option here to put a URL to the abstraction channel. So if people ever wanted to find that, they could. So why don't we do that? C and then I have out here on the desktop the abstraction channel. So this this goes to here's where that's going to go. This is the abstraction channel and here's the pagoda scope, uh, a video of people partying at the pagoda scope. And there's the the pagoda scope. As a matter of fact, one of these uh, the videos I, you'd have to go off to Dan's end to see the videos. One of the videos actually has that crap work operational. Um, anyway, this is the page and it's got a pretty decent URL. So we'll use that URL there. That's bloob. Let's get rid of the blue one. See. Okay, so how does that sound? Yeah, virtual kaleidoscope. See that and that will link through and eventually get people to there. Uh -huh. You can set the curve. You can set the curve, the speed, uh, the curve, the speed, and the delay. You can set the curve, speed, and delay. That okay, works. You can set the curve, speed, including reverse and delay, to give the nested noise Nested noise, comma, nested noise generated art. That's a nested noise generative art, the effect of whispering. All right, uh, good. Audubon Whisper is the second. What do we decide to do with this? Second NFT to be minted. Uh, Dr. Abstract minted both of them. Second NFT. Uh, I don't know, to be official, aside from the Zim NFT. But then it sounds like this is the second one when the first one was really bloob by the gadget minters. Uh, I think we'll get away with it. Um, it's the second in this, in, in this series that I'll be doing. You guys may be minting in Zim. So, oh, my apologies. I forgot. We're, we're here live in video, aren't we? And this video is 
moving along. It's now down been an hour. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to hit the button. <laughs> All right, let's do it. So what the heck? Upload the object. I have to do this again. I guess I do. I, I don't know if I do it well. If I hit preview, I'll see what happens. Okay, I don't. So there it is. Autobahn Whisper. Imagine you're in the Pagoda Scope by Dr. Astronaut. This Autobahn Whisper is used for a craft work video custom made for the L Space VR world where people party in a virtual reality scope. Can you see this URL? You can set a curve, you can set the curve speed, including reverse delay. Okay, good. That all looks good. There's our stuff. Ready? Here we go. Um, oh, as we mint, we need a wallet. So that is Ku something Kakai wallet app. So here's my Kakai wallet app right here. Oh, you can see how much, how many Tez I have. I have about 148 uh, US dollars in Tez there. Um, this is the wallet ID. All of this stuff is public. Um, there's not much you can do about it, but it doesn't really matter because you are the one that can access this, not other people. And here we mint, and as I mint, it's going to connect to the wallet, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So here it is preparing the, the object. And soon we'll get a message up here that connects to, there it is, preparing request. The request is sent. And over here, here is the request. So I'm now going to confirm that this fee uh, is going to be paid. So I hit confirm and this side of it is confirmed and over on the other this is showing us what it's doing now and now it's pretty well done. I don't think you have to wait anymore here but uh, as soon as all that stuff goes away it's been um, put on the blockchain. So that was it. We just minted. Now setting up your wallet is another another video. There's information on how to set up your wallet here. Getting a wallet and Tezos. So go to get the wallet. It's free and easy. I would suggest you ask me on Slack for some Tezos and I'll transfer those Tezos right to your wallet. You just give me your wallet number. I transfer a few uh, Tezo or whatever. Tezo is two bucks. I, that, I'm happy doing that. Don't worry about it. Uh, so I'll transfer you a, a Tezo. And then you can um, eventually you'll be able to collect the Zim NFT right here as soon as we set those live. All right. So otherwise, if, if you, you need to go through more, there's more steps here. But that also depends on which country and all sorts of verification and stuff like that. So it's a bit harder to get Tezos that way. You buy Bitcoins, basically, and then uh, uh, exchange them for, for Tezos. And put them in your wallet. Okay, so that's it's not too bad, but it took me a day or two, maybe a week or two, uh, to kind of go through that whole process. So getting a wallet, no problem. Getting some Tezos from me, that's probably no problem too. So I haven't tried it yet, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. There you go. And there's the process that we just did. And let's see if it actually has finished the minting now. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Blue begin, but I uh, come back. So there's some more things on Hicket Nunk. Uh, if it did make it, we would see it arrive right here. I don't see it yet. I don't see Blue here, so I think that it's not going to be there yet. If I look up manage assets, it's not. So it takes sometimes up to 20 minutes, um, a while. We're not going to wait for that to appear in here. But if it's on the blockchain and did that, that process, it'll get here eventually. <laughs> there we go. I am Dr. Abstract. There's my signature, D, R, and an A, Dr. Abstract. Inventor of gadgets, founder of the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework for coding creativity, and a notist. Hey, <laughs> I do talks at the notice colony, um, and it's a philosophy of nodism. All right, uh, we'll catch you later. And this has been a Zim Explore. Uh, once again, oh, it's been a Zim Explore. I am Dr. Abstract. Yeah, and here we go. And a Zim Explore. Woohoo! It's a good one on how to make NFTs. So try it out. Tell your friends. Come on, hang out with us. Zimjs.com slash Slack. Zimjs.com slash Discord. We would love to see what you're doing. Bye-bye.